Welcome to Politica Insight video. Russia is going to have two big competitions this year, presidential elections and the Football World Cup. And only the results of the first are predictable. Less so what comes after Vladimir Putin is confirmed to rule the country for another six years. With me to discuss that is Anes Oslund, Swedish economist and advisor, including to governments of Russia and other post-Soviet states. Dr. Aslund, welcome. The election in March has been moved a week forward just to coincide with the fourth anniversary of annexation of Crimea, what was then uh, Ukrainian territory. If this is going to be a symbol for the fourth term in office of Vladimir Putin, we don't have any hope for the better. Well, I should first say that Crimea is still legally Ukrainian uh, territory. No, it's uh, very uh, significant that uh, uh, President Putin feels that he needs to run on a four-year-old uh, military victory and uh, uh, that he doesn't have anything new to offer his uh, 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 population. It's very clear that there will not be any economic reforms. Russia is today a kleptocracy that is completely stuck in uh, that, uh, that uh, system. So President Putin cannot uh, do reforms and a kleptocracy cannot produce much uh, economic growth. So growth last year was only 1.4%. Nobody really expected to be more than 2%. So this is a regime that doesn't really have any future at all. Um, Russia has been um, wrong in, the, in its uh, perception of the Western reaction to its, uh, to its actions in, in uh, recent years. NATO has reacted more strongly than, than Kremlin thought it would, it would do. Uh, the US and the EU have introduced and maintained uh, sanctions. Uh, and of course Ukraine did actually fight. So in terms of a part of, of the state of economy, in terms of um, predicting the uh, consequences of its uh, international behavior, Putin has been totally wrong. Yeah, uh, you can say that the war in uh, August 2008 in Georgia, that was a great success for him. Uh, the occupation and annexation of Crimea was another uh, success, but uh, the war in Donbass has been a disaster and uh, the war in Syria might have been politically successful but in foreign policy, in domestic uh, politics has not given in something. So it shows that Putin's main strategy seems to be to go for small victorious wars but then you have to find wars that you can fight that are small enough and that are uh, victorious and uh, Putin is not likely to uh, challenge NATO anywhere, also in the Baltic states, because then it would be a big and uh, a dangerous war. So it looks as if uh, uh, President Putin in that way is cornered. What can he then do? Well, hybrid warfare uh, through uh, cyber, through corruption, the information warfare. In the information. These are the things that we uh, w would expect, not uh, hard military warfare. Mm. Uh, on the economic side, you, you, you've mentioned that the, the, the Russians must see that the GDP has, has just uh, beginning re recovering from, from decline. But the budget, uh, uh, the Russian budget is still very heavily oil dependent. Um, uh, the demographics are probably the enemy of, of growth, if anything, um, and even the defense budget had to shrink. So uh, do, the, do the Russian population see that in, in terms of economy, which is, which is crucial for the future of the country, Putin is not a good, uh, not a good ruler, not a good leader? Uh, Putin lost the uh, middle class in 2011, 2012 during the protests then and he is now basing himself uh, on the, the poor, the uneducated, uh, the provincial. 
pretty much like uh, Alexander Lukashenko in, uh, in uh, Belarus. And that's his electorate uh, now. And they are less uh, sensitive to the economic factors, he thinks. We can't really judge if he's uh, right in that. This does not look sustainable in the long run, but uh, we saw the Soviet Union was sustainable for a very long time. So it's very difficult to uh, guess when uh, something can happen. Speaking about the protests and, and, and their leaders, Alexei Navalny seems to be the enemy number one of, of, of Kremlin for quite a long time, for more than, than 10 years now. Yet still, it, he, he doesn't create any threat uh, to Putin in, in electoral terms. Why is Russian opposition so weak? Well, because it's not allowed to show itself. Uh, Navalny is not uh, allowed on any television channel. Uh, none of the 22 uh, television channels in uh, Russia uh, can show uh, Navalny. Navalny can easily, in any uh, of 100 cities in Russia, uh, mobilize uh, a, a couple of thousands of uh, uh, people, while Putin today cannot organize a mass meeting because it would be too embarrassing that so few people can. So, in your view, it is the machinery of propaganda which is key to Putin's success? Not only of propaganda, but of information uh, generally. Uh, Na uh, Navalny can get uh, 25 million views of his uh, uh, top film on uh, YouTube, but uh, 25 million, that's uh, one-sixth of the uh, population, and probably several of them have seen it uh, 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 several uh, times I have. Um, one of the major concerns in, in the West, certainly in NATO, certainly in NATO's eastern flank, is that Russian military modernization uh, is done in the purpose of, uh, of attacking the, the West. What is, your, what is your view? Clearly they are operating in that fashion, but uh, as my lead friend Boris Nemtsov uh, uh, used to say, uh, Putin uh, uh, believes in Article 5 of the NATO statutes, so therefore he's not likely to attack the, the Baltic uh, states uh, or Poland. Putting the, the military stuff aside, is, is, Putin, is Putin able to regain the trust of Western Europe, United States, other um, global actors? I don't think so. I think that uh, the US and Europe have turned uh, the back on uh, Russia for a long time and after sanctions have been applied, trade declines and therefore the commercial interest in maintaining the, the trade becomes less. We can see that the protests from the business community against sanctions are all the time uh, declining. You don't uh, protest in order to regain a lost market, but it's also important that uh, all former Soviet republics are dead frightened of uh, Russia today. So whom can Putin t turn to? China, where Russia is a junior partner, and less important countries like uh, Egypt and Venezuela. So Russia is really cornered in international affairs. Um, in, in business terms, or in, in terms of business uh, relation to political decisions, what, in your view, will happen to the project of Nord Stream 2? It's difficult to say. Uh, it looks uh, uh, sometimes as if it will happen, sometimes as if it will not happen. I think that the three main uh, uh, objections today are first uh, uh, European Commission policy, with regard to uh, the third energy package, if it applies to pipelines going into the European Union, as Vice President Shevtsovich uh, wants, or only inside the European Union, as the uh, German government wants. The second is that Denmark has adopted a law not allowing Nord Stream 2 through its territorial waters. And the third is Poland, that can sue uh, Nord Stream 2 in several different ways in the European Court of Justice. So you can say that what Putin has achieved is uh, 
opposition in countries who felt who used to feel sympathetic to him, like Denmark, like Sweden, for instance, like even like Finland, uh, who are uh, now putting much more um, attention to military, to uh, deterrence, to relations with the United States, and who are watching very closely Russian activities, not only in the military field, but also in economics and information warfare. Well, I would say that uh, Sweden and Finland have always been very careful with Russia, Denmark uh, probably uh, less so, but uh, Sweden and Finland are clearly drawing closer to, uh, to NATO uh, today. Previously it was not uh, an issue in uh, Sweden, uh, today it, uh, it is. So if Putin stays in Kremlin, and he will do so for another six years, what do you think will happen after that? I think that uh, Russia today is uh, a personal authoritarian regime and uh, such a person stays in power uh, until he dies. And uh, uh, we have seen in Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Azerbaijan, Belarus uh, that uh, the rulers have uh, adjusted uh, the, the constitutions uh, so that they can stay in power. Russia has already uh, amended its uh, constitutions once uh, and it can easily do so, uh, so again. I'm sure that Putin will stay in, in power uh, until he is uh, ousted or dies. A grim prediction. Dr. Aslan, thank you very much. Thank you. And stay tuned for more from Politica Insight video.